yes, we are doing two Led Zeppelin album reviews twice a week. Just had some water. Um, we'll be reviewing House of the Holy. Pretend like I have the album. I don't. I. It just doesn't interest me to buy it. I'll only play it like once. Uh, whether as for um, Led Zeppelin 2 or even something like Physical Graffiti, which I don't own. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. I'll play that way more because I love it more. But 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 for me some of the songs on this album I don't really play that much and we'll get to the songs later but I need to address the elephant in the room hopefully I'm saying that right Zeppelin even though they were one of the biggest bands in the world had some quite some direct competition in 73 and of course I'm talking about the album that everybody loves and knows um, Dark Side of the Moon. And Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin have a lot, or at least Houses of the Holy and this album have a lot in common, which I'll, especially with the album art and who designed it. Hypnosis, of course, uh, who worked with Pink Floyd until Animals, and they started working with them on uh, their album covers. On Sauce Full of Secrets. Um, but they also designed, of course, Houses of the Holy. I believe they designed the last two Aussie albums for with Black Sabbath. Um, so that is pretty interesting. And yeah, so of course, also Aladdin Sane came out that year. Um, trying to also think what else came out that year. Um, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath came out that year. Pin Ups by David Bowie, once again, and even though that's not one of my favorite Bowie albums, it came out that year. Band on the Run, um, Mind Games, so a lot of great albums came out that year. Oh yeah, Goat's Head Soup by The Stones, underrated as a masterpiece, came out that year. But this one just, it, it, it's... If you were to ask me, what are your top 10 favorite albums of 1973, it would be on that list, but pretty low. Uh, I just don't really listen to the album that much, besides from like two or three songs. I don't play it that much. Uh, I don't listen to some of the song, many of the songs outside of the album. But for me, I do enjoy it a lot. But... Also, I forgot to mention, this was the last album on Atlantic Records. They would uh, make a record company called Swan Song. Uh, they only made three albums on there, well, not including Coda. And, yeah. And also, I forgot to mention, Swan Song has one of the coolest record logos ever. I don't have any Swan Song albums, but or Swan Song records, uh, well, albums that were on Swan Song. Uh, water break. Mm, I love water. Yeah, so, for, yeah, it was the last album on Atlantic Records. And also, we also need to talk about the album cover, which was, of course, designed by legendary art collective Hypnosis. Uh, but the album does feature nudity. I think it's, like, uh, two, well, children's, like, children's butts are showing it's it's a weird album cover so for the purpose of the thumbnail i'll be featuring the album um well when you first get the album it comes with like this white like i don't know what to call it so it comes around the album and it blocks all the nudity so i'll have that uh, as my thumbnail because i don't want to get in trouble I don't know if, if I will, but I don't. I don't want to risk anything, and I don't want to lose my channel. So, so I I, I won't do that. Uh, and for me, this is probably the most commercial sounding Led Zeppelin record. There's a, I mean, hell, there's a ballad on here. Um, there's a funk song. There's a reggae song. There's a, a psychedelic rock song. This album is a very diverse album, and it has one of the worst Led Zeppelin songs for me. 
course, I'm talking about the crunch, which I'll talk about later. Uh, it's not as bad as Hats Off to Ray Harper. And once again, I'll be mentioning Pink Floyd. Those two bands have a lot of co in common with each other. Roy Harper sang on one of the songs on Wish You Were Here, made by Pink Floyd. You see the third song here? It's called Have a Cigar. He sings on it. I'm going nuts. I'm telling you right now. So Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin have a lot in common. I'm telling you. And, yeah, this, I believe this is also one of the albums that got delayed due to, to, uh, the art that Jimmy Page was very interested in. Uh, of course, Led Zeppelin 3 got delayed due to this spinny wheel thing. So, hopefully try to show you. Yeah, you get the idea. Those... If you want to see more how it functions, then go check out my Led Zeppelin 3 video. Uh, so, that's all basically I have to say about this album uh, before we get into my overall thoughts. So, I'll get into those songs right now. So, the first song on this album is the song that... The song remains the same. And when you, fir when you first hear Robert Klein's vocals, you hear something really different. It's his voice. They speed it up uh, and... Well, actually, Jimmy Page speeds it up. Um, I don't know who they is, but Jimmy Page sp sped it up, and it just sounds kind of off for me. Um, and they would, it, the next time they would do it, it works on, on No Quarter, the best song on this album. Uh, uh, but for that, it's going to get a 0.5 off of it, so I'm going to give it a 9.5. But otherwise, from that little kerfuffle it's awesome i love the fast sections and the slower sections uh, i think robert plant even though with that vocal that sped up vocals um he kills it it's just awesome the next song is the first 10 on 10 on this album actually an 11 on 10 i absolutely love this song it's a masterpiece the rain song i believe george harrison asked them to write a ballad so they came up with this and Liz up when writing ballads is awesome, and it always works. Uh, I mean, Stairway to Heaven is basically a ballad, kind of, kind of not. Uh, but this song really works, and I love it, especially when Bonzo's drums come in, and the, I believe the piano, yeah, the piano comes in. I don't know who was on the piano on that. I think it's maybe it's JPJ, uh, but I don't know. So overall, I'd give this like an 11 on 10. It's a perfect song. I think it's one of Led Zeppelin's most underrated, along with another one that I'll mention later. So let's get to the the, the next song, which is the most popular song on this album, besides Dire Maker. Yes, that's the title of the song. Uh, Over the Hills and Far Away. <sighs> I never really liked this song until like now. Um, along with rock and roll, it's like one that I say it is overrated and it's just not that uh like um, when i play that much but a lot of people don't like the guitar solo and i really do enjoy it and once again when uh, bonzo's drums come in that's when the song gets amazing i mean i love the guitar riff at the beginning but uh, it, it it just gets better when Bonzo comes in, and uh, I believe maybe, no, I think, never mind. And I just have the thought right here. I think House of the Holies is a sequel to Led Zeppelin 3, even though then it should have been called Led Zeppelin 5. Basically, I think this should have been Led Zeppelin 4, because it's more in the tone of this than Led Zeppelin 4. That's my opinion. And Led Zeppelin... Four, no, Led Zeppelin Four should have not been Houses of the Holy. Physical Graffiti should have been Houses of the Holy. I'm telling you that. And some of the songs that were held off from this album, once again, should have been Houses of the Holy. And yeah, that just got confusing. 
But overall, I'd, I'd give this song a, a 9.5 on 10. Another 9.5 song. Even though I do think the uh, song remains the same is better. Then closing out side one. It's got to be one of the worst album closers ever. Along with Hats Off to Roy Harper. Uh, but the crunch is the worst. <laughs> the beat is good. Um, I do love Bonzo and JPJ. They're awesome as a rhythm section. But it's just a bit eh. Like Led Zeppelin doing funk is never would never work. And they did a, it. It, it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. Overall, I'm going to give this one a 6 on 10. There's nothing too special about it. There's nothing to write home about it. So, moving on to side 2, Dancing Days, another 11 on 10. I love the guitar riff. It's excellent. It's perfect. I don't care what you think about this song. If you hate it or you love it, another water break. Whatever you think about this song, it's got to be one of the most underrated songs on this album and out of Led Zeppelin's entire catalog. Half of the songs on here are underrated, even though everybody knows this album pretty well if you're a rock fan. But overall, it, it's, a, it's a great song. Everybody does a great job on this song. Um, of course, Bonzo, Paige, Plant, and JPJ do an amazing job on this album and yeah so that's basically my thoughts about this song but it's perfect outside of this album i don't listen to a lot of the songs but this is the one i really listen to all the time along with the rain song even though that one's quite lengthy it's like nearly eight minutes uh dancing days is three minutes so i listen to it basically all the time the next song is the most popular song on this album dire maker <sighs> This used to be my favorite Led Zeppelin song. That was the time where I didn't know about the Rover, or I didn't know about the two magnific the two underrated magnificent songs off this this album, Led Zeppelin Two. Uh, Thank you and what is and what should never be. It's just awesome. So for me, my favorites as a little boy were Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, a Whole Lot of Love, Immigrant Song. Um, yes, Rock and Roll, that's when I actually loved that song, even though I still do. Misty Mountain Hop, basically every song off this album and off of the debut were my favorites. And Ramble On and a few off of Led Zeppelin too. So, and uh, Dire Maker. So those were my favorites, but then I dived into their catalog, and this was one I barely play anymore. So as a result, when I was playing this one, again... I really don't, I really don't enjoy it that much anymore. I'm going to give it an 8 on 10. I still like it, but I don't love it. Um, it's just not that in interesting. And Robert Plant's vocals. This is where I have a problem with his vocals. This is probably, besides from uh, Into the Outdoor, his worst album for his vocal performances. So, for me, it just is... It's, it's fine, but the, it kind of, it, it doesn't ruin the song, but also, Jimmy Page's guitar isn't that present on the song. Um, well, I mean, it is, but it's not, like, awesome. There's no great riff like there is on Heartbreaker off this masterpiece, and uh, uh, even a simplistic s guitar strum on Good Times and Bad Times. Good Times Bad Times. not Good Times and Bad Times. <sighs> off of the awesome debut so for me the song just falls flat and it doesn't it doesn't it's not as amazing as the other songs we heard before and the songs we'll hear after what the last two songs which which leads into my favorite song on the album album and my probably in my top 10 favorite Led Zeppelin songs ever I'm talking about no quarter JPJ is ultimately the standout on this song even though the vocal effects on Robert Plant absolutely work. This is a psychedelic rock masterpiece. I love Jimmy Page's guitar work. And this is the the one song where John Paul Jones, not John Paul Jones, John Bonham 
isn't the standard. He's like the standard in every Led Zeppelin song, along with Jimmy Page and and uh, Robert Plant. Poor John Paul Jones. But John Paul Jones is basically the standout on this one, along with, like, there's only two I can think where he's the standout on the song. Uh, Misty Mountain Hop and this one. But those are two of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs, so he's the reason why I love them. Um, so I'm going to give this one an 11 out of 10. And, of course, I believe there's a pian another little piano on this song, which I really do enjoy. For, for some reason, every time I think it, I hear a piano on a rock song, I think it's Nicky Hopkins, but it's probably not. I should double check it. And here's the, the last song on this album, The Ocean, which is one I don't really listen to that much, and I'm going to give it a 9 on 10. I'm sorry. The guitar riff is awesome, uh, and I love the breakdown. Uh, I love John Paul Jones' bass on that breakdown. Um, but it's, it doesn't do much for me. Uh, and... Again, it does kind of fall flat. I don't know. I just kind of get tired listening to the song, and that's why I don't really play as much as the other songs. So overall, I'm going to give this one a 9.5 on 10, and it's going to come in last place on my list. Uh, and I'll show you the order now. So in last place is Houses of the Holy, which I'll give a 9.5 on 10. Then... Finally, never going to be in last place ever again, Led Zeppelin 2, at, coming at number 4 with a 10 on 10. Then, number 3, I think it is. Yes, number 3 goes to this album, Led Zeppelin 3, which also has a 10 on 10. You can see where I'm going with this. Number 2 goes to the debut album which has an 11 on 10. I love it. It's perfect. And I forgot to mention the standout songs. Uh, I won't mention the standout songs for each of these albums because I mentioned them. But also coming also coming at number one is Led Zeppelin 4. So the standout... Well, actually, there's only three songs, I think, that are the standouts. No Quarter, obviously, Dancing Days in the Rain song. So that's my review of Houses of the Holy. I'll see you next time. Bye. And also, comment down your favorite song on this album.